Autolite and its 96,000 dealers present Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Over the Bounding Main, a suspense play starring Mr. Dan Daly. Thanks, Marty. When are you going to put a light in this garage? Sorry, honey, I forgot. You forgot. You forgot. Too bad you can't forget to wake up some morning. Look, just because you had a couple too many drinks at the Warrens, you don't have to get nasty. I had too many. Are you kidding? I watched you. Don't think I didn't. Oh, come on, let's go in. I've got to be downtown early. For what? Because you can make enough to buy a house at Catalina like the Warrens? Get a new car? There's a little thing called money. But you wouldn't know. You've got to find the right job. Are we going to go over that again? Yes, we're going over that again. I'm ashamed when I go out. Did you see what she was wearing? Keep your voice down, the neighbors. You say that again and I'll kill you. You'll be sorry in the morning. I'll be sorry, all right. Sorry like every other morning. Because you'll be here. In just a moment, Mr. Dan Daly in the first act of Over the Bounding Main. Say, Wilcox, what's your favorite fall hobby? Fishing. And for what? For compliments on ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, and I catch plenty. <laughs> what kind of bait do you use? Cars with sluggish, gas-hungry engines whose spark plugs are not functioning properly. When Autolite spark plugs go to work on these lazy, limp, and listless lorries, wow, they start up like a trout after a fly. Speed along smooth as a sailfish and use less gas than a salmon swimming downstream. You must have a pretty good line. Yes, sir. The Autolite spark plug line is the best there is because Autolite spark plugs are designed by the same Autolite engineers who designed the coil, distributor, and all the other important parts that make up the complete ignition system used as original factory equipment on many of America's leading makes of cars. When you replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, you get... Quick starts, smoother performance, gas savings. I'm hooked, Harlow. Thank you, my fickle fisherman. Friends, this fall, have your spark plugs checked by your friendly Autolite spark plug dealer. And have him replace worn-out spark plugs with new ignition-engineered Autolite resistor or standard-type spark plugs. Then you'll know why you're always right with Autolite. And now, with Over the Bounding Main and the performance of Mr. Dan Daly... Autolite hopes once again to keep you in suspense. If you don't need a rest, I certainly do, Marty. I'm so tired of this lousy apartment, I could scream. So scream and let the neighbors have some fun. I'm sick of them, too. The Warrens were darn nice to invite us. I didn't say we can't go. You never say anything anymore or do anything either. You're sure in a swell mood tonight. I should have stayed downtown. In which joint? Lay off, I'm tired. From what? You're not working. Now, don't start that again. You know I'm looking. Looking? Can I live on nothing? Look at these clothes. I'm ashamed to go out in the street. Now tell me how much better off you were when you were married to that wise operator, Lou. I was. At least I owned shoes without holes in them. Yeah. Lou Barris was just a little dream man. Just so ginger peachy, you could hardly wait to leave town with me. The day I divorced Lou, I wondered if I was making a mistake. And the day after I became Mrs. Martin Evans, I knew I had. You're going to be a lot of fun on this fishing trip. Don't tell me we're going, after all. I can stand a vacation, too. They call it the Pacific Ocean. It means peaceful, which is something I could use right now. I guess a lot of it was my fault. I wanted the right kind of a job, and it was hard to find. Ever since Claire had got rid of Lou Barris, her ex, we'd been living pretty close, and Claire wasn't used to it. The Warrens made it worse. They were well-heeled, and I was supposed to keep up with the Warrens. I knew I couldn't ever do it. Maybe Claire knew it, too. Claire had got the invitation for us to go with the Warrens to Catalina, so now we were driving down 22nd Street in San Pedro to the landing. It was nearly 6 in the morning, and you could see a light fog drifting in the harbor. 
Don't forget to lock it. Sure. Look out for the fishing rods, will you? You better give me the keys. You're so careless. I won't lose them. I know you. All that junk in your pockets, you'll lose them. Don't worry. I will. Why don't you let me hang on to them? We'll be in a nice mess if we... If we... All right, all right. Here they are. Thank you, dear. I guess we're the first ones here. I don't see Bob's car. Oh, I forgot to tell you. We're meeting him at the Isthmus. On the island? Yeah. He's been there all week. You didn't say anything about it. I thought... For Pete's sake, what difference does it make? If you're worrying about chartering a boat to get us there, you can stop. It's all arranged. Bob's paying for it. They know you're broke. Sure, you blabbed that to everyone. I was a great guy when I had it. Well, you lost it, so let's not talk, shall we? That's okay with me. That must be the boat down there. The Pelican. Is that the name? I think so. Yeah, that's it. Watch your step. Why the devil do you wear shoes like that on a fishing trip? Because they're all I have. Hello? Anyone aboard? One moment, senor. Senor Evans? That's right. Come aboard, please. Uh, if I may help the lady. Oh. Uh, Phew. You can sure tell this is a fishing boat. You the captain on this tub? Oh, no, no, senor. No. I'm Ignacio. And I helped to run the engine. I thought you looked a little young. Where is he? Uh, he went ashore for a minute, senor. Well, I'm ready any time he is. Here, Sonny, take my stuff below. Si, sí, senora. Right away. Smart-looking kid. Oh, gosh. Is it only six? I'm sleepy. You'll wake up when we get going. Oh, mm, smell that air. You know, honey, I think we're going to have fun. There must be a bunk somewhere. I'm going below. Oh, come on. Stay with me. No, I'm sleepy. Wake me up when we get there. Okay, but you'll be sorry. I'm going to start trolling as soon as we clear the harbor. Hey, Senor Evans, there's the captain coming down the dock now. Oh, yeah? Now we get started, huh? Si, si. I read where the albacore are running. Well, it may be, senor. I uh, have only been working on the pelican for two days. We have some big white feather jigs you can troll with that. Swell. All set? Si, si, Captain Murray. Well, let's go, then. I'm Mr. Evans. The wife is below taking a nap. Hello. All right, let's cast off. All clear. Think this fog will lift? Might. <laughs> Any idea how far offshore we might hit Albacore? There's no telling. Uh, how long do you figure for us to reach Catalina? Depends on the fog. Oh. Well, I guess I'll go get my outfit rigged up. Yeah, why don't you do that? Are you sure that feathers are the best lure for them? <laughs> I have caught many albacore with it, senor. If they're hungry, they will take. Uh, the season has been good. Well... Hey, hey, stop the boat. Hey, strike, senor. Let him take it now. Give him line. Give him, give it to me. He's got it. Uh, count five, senor. Slow now. Slow. Now. Now, senor, strike. <laughs> that is a big one, senor. Well, a, <laughs> hey, hey, stop the boat. What, what's the matter with him? I want to lose my line. I can't hold him. Brace yourself against the rail. And... Go tell that fool captain to stop the boat, will you? See, si, see. Si. Captain, it's strike. Senor, look out. The rail, I... Are you hurt, Senor? No. Thanks. If you hadn't pushed me out, I'd gone over. I, I just can't understand the rail breaking that way. What the devil was Moran trying to do? We could have been killed. You tell him to stop, he speeds up? Well, maybe he didn't hear me. I want a few words with that joker. Hey! Yeah. Do you know I almost went into the drink? The rail at the stern broke. Well, that's too bad. I'll have to get it fixed. Yeah? What the devil were you trying to do? The kid yelled for you to stop. I'm sorry. I thought he wanted me to put about. Thought you'd lost your tackle. I down there lost my skin. If Ignacio hadn't been so quick on his feet... Sorry. That's the way he said it. Just like he dropped ashes on the rug or maybe brushed you casually on the street. Sorry. That was dandy. I've wrecked your car, made love to your wife, strangled your mother, but it's okay, mister. I'm sorry. And that was all I got. He just turned back to the wheel and then something stuck in my memory. I kept thinking I'd seen the guy before. Never talked to him or met him. But somehow I knew him. I looked him over. 
Six foot one, black hair, the usual amount of face. I couldn't pin him down. I figured it was just one of those mental tricks, or maybe he looked like my Uncle Phil and let it go. I started aft when all of a sudden Claire came out on deck. She rushed to the stern, looked over, and then spun around and saw me. She had a strange look in her eye, and her face was as white as a seagull's wing. What's the matter? Are you sick? No, I... Yes, I think I'm seasick. There is a bit of a swell. Stay on deck, you'll feel better. No, I'm going to lie down again. Okay. Gee, you look pretty bad. Come on, I'll help you down. I'm all right. Go on back up. Whew. No wonder you feel lousy. The smell. Oil and dead bait. I'm not kidding. You'll feel better up Let there. me alone, will you? Hey, what's the matter with the engine? How should I know? Well, take it easy. Yeah, I'll take it easy. What's wrong, Moran? No, nothing serious. We'll be on our way in a few minutes. Yeah? Looks like the fire's getting thicker. Don't you think you ought to sound your horn? It's on the blink. Swell. This tub's in great shape. That'll do. Where's the kid? Ignacio. He's below, hunting down the trouble. Nice kid, you know. If it wasn't for him, yeah. I... Yeah. I want to give him something when we get off. You do that. Uh, I saw a couple of boils out there a minute ago. Albacore. Get your line in the water. Relax. It was a fine way to relax. Drifting in the Catalina Channel with no motor, no foghorn, and you couldn't see more than 20 feet out. I threw my line in and tried to forget it. And the way the albacore was striking, I almost did. After a couple of hours, maybe three, I'd had enough, so I folded up with my back to the bait tank and dozed off. When I woke up, we were still drifting and the fog was even thicker. Then I realized it was getting dark. I started to look for Moran. I felt something was wrong, something besides the motor. And when I heard their voices, I knew it. I can't. I can't. You don't have any choice. It'll be dark in an hour. I can't stall him with this bum motor gag much longer. Please. I don't get it. You come crawling to me with this big idea, so why get squeamish? He's worth a lot more dead than alive. Twenty grand, isn't it? I just can't do it. Now listen, baby, there's a lot of dough invested in the guy, and it's going to go through on schedule. We're going to trade one bullet for 20,000 bucks. There isn't any way of backing out. <laughs> Autolite is bringing you Mr. Dan Daly in Over the Bounding Main. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Hey, Hap, uh, did I tell you about the whale? Whale? What whale? The whale of a job being done by ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs. Delighted drivers declare that for fast starts, smoother engine performance, and gas savings, these ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs can't be beaten. Go on, Jonah. I'm listening. And, like Jonah, Autolite ignition engineers know their business from inside to out, from head to tail. Autolite engineers design spark plugs just as they design the complete ignition system, used as original factory equipment on many of America's leading makes of cars. That's why Autolite spark plugs are engineered to work together perfectly with the coil, distributor, and the rest of the ignition system. You're spouting like Moby Dick, Wilcox. Well, I'm always glad to spout about those great ignition-engineered Autolite spark plugs, Hap. They're unexcelled for quick starts, smoother performance, gas savings. Hark to Harlow, the happy harpooner. Thousands of motorists agree that Autolite spark plugs are the best bet for better driving. Replace worn-out spark plugs with ignition-engineered Autolite, resistor, or standard-type spark plugs. And remember, you're always right with Autolite. And now, Autolite brings back to our Hollywood soundstage, Mr. Dan Daly, in Elliot Lewis's production of Over the Bounding Main, a tale well calculated to keep you in suspense. I don't think I was scared. Not at first, that is. You can only take in so much, and then something in your mind shuts it off. A 
stood there in the fog and the darkness and said, help me, the only thing I could think of was how the Warrens would take it when I didn't arrive at the Isthmus. Sounds crazy, doesn't it? Then from somewhere, a foghorn sounded off in the distance, and I came to like someone had thrown water on my face. I almost laughed at myself. The Warrens were probably playing canasta over in Brentwood or drinking beer in front of somebody's television set. This fishing trip was Claire's idea, and the only thing she planned on hooking was a $20,000 policy on the life of Martin Evans. I moved away and toward the stern. I needed help now. And maybe there was somebody I could count on. That young deckhand, Ignacio. I found him, all right. Sprawled on his face in the bow, lying over the anchor. Kid. Ignacio. Hey. Wake up. Hey, kid. Wake up. Come on. Go inside. He smelled like a distillery. I shook him, slapped him as hard as I dared, but he went right on sleeping. Captain Moran had taken good care of the only friend I had. With the mickeys poured into him, he'd be lucky if he ever woke up. Now I was good and scared. It was almost completely dark. Moran would be coming on deck, and then I remembered the gap. The pole with a razor-sharp hook at the end. I'd used it to pull up the albacore on deck. I moved to the stern, quietly, feeling with my feet, because I couldn't see now. Then I tripped over something and fell on the deck. It was the gas. I grabbed it and got up. Evans! Evans! I know you're there. Evans! I couldn't see him and he couldn't see me. I moved silently around the deck in a crazy game of blind man's bluff. Just moving away from his voice and trying to think of a way out. Evans! Can you hear me? I heard him all right. His voice sounded muffled, as though the fog was a black hood closing off the world, like they drop over a guy's head on the gallows. Gallow. Rope. Rope. There was a coil of heavy rope on the forward deck. A coil of heavy rope on the forward deck. All right, Evans, you can't get very far. You getting tired, Evans? Want to go around again? Hear the foghorn, Evans? Well, you better listen to it. You won't hear anything else for a long time. You still have that gap, or do you drop it again? You can't see it, but I got a gun in my hand. Maybe we can make a deal, huh? Keep away from me! Ah, so Mr. Evans can talk. You huh? won't get away with this! Oh, I think so. After all, is it my fault if a new deckhand I hire gets crazy drunk and shoots up the ship? He'll tell! He'll tell! Mutiny! Murder! No, he won't even remember it. Isn't it funny what liquor will do to a kid? The penalty for mutiny is a rough one. After all these years, the book still calls for a hanging on the public dock. But maybe he can plead insanity, huh? And I'm sorry he had to kill you, Evans. You won't get me! You won't get me! Is he dead? Did he? He decided to swim for it. Well, that saved a lot of trouble. Awful. Yeah, 20,000 bucks worth of awful. The only thing I'm sore about is the lousy jerk won't be able to watch us enjoy it. I lay there quietly on the deck. I didn't breathe any more than I had to. I was about as safe as a turkey in November. If Moran should notice that missing coil of rope, it wouldn't take him long to figure out exactly what had made that splash in the water. He couldn't see any better than I could, but as soon as it got light, there I'd be out in the open without a prayer. And the only thing I'd gain was a few hours at the most. So I huddled against the rail and hung onto the fishing gaff, feeling like David might have if he'd have broken his slingshot just before he met Goliath. It gets cold out of the ocean, and the fog can soak through summer denims in a hurry. I started to ship. I had to clamp my jaw together tight to keep my teeth from chattering. But the cold did one thing. It seemed to free some of the fear out of me, and I started to think. I had it pretty well figured out. All except one thing. When I heard Claire and Moran coming out on deck. Can't miss if you don't louse it up. Those cops are smart. 
One little angle where our stories don't match it. I'll just keep your head. Don't worry about me. This is important. Now, once more. Not again. Once more. Now, who heard the shot? I did. And? I rushed on deck to see Ignacio struggling with Marty. Ignacio had a gun. Ignacio had a gun. He and Marty fought. He hit the side. Marty went overboard. And our engine's dead. He just disappeared in the darkness, right? Can't we start back? Well, I gotta change some parts first. Make it look like the engine really was out. See? Every little angle counts. I wish it was over. And for Pete's sake, remember my name is Moran, and you never saw me until you got on board the Pelican. There's no way they can check. I don't even have the locket anymore. Good. I'm gonna fix the engine. As soon as it gets light, we'll head back to port. I had forgotten all about Claire's locket. But when she mentioned it, the last chunk of this puzzle dropped into the slot. And I wondered why I hadn't thought of it before. That crummy little locket, heart shaped with Claire's picture on one side and Lou Barris's on the other. The one she wanted to keep for sentiment's sake. Her first husband, Lou Barris, the guy I remembered from the picture. Captain Moran, that's who he was. It all figured. Lou scores a triple play. Gets his wife back with 20 grand in a purse and pays off Martin Evans with a one way trip to the bottom of the ocean. And I couldn't think of any way to stop him. It must have been hours later, or or minutes, when I thought of the dame. She was swinging from the stern about 25 feet off. Somehow in the dark, I found a line and was about to pull on it when I saw Claire come on deck. I didn't move. (laughs) Claire, if you make a sound, I'll hook this gaff right through your throat. Marty. Yeah, return from the dead. And I haven't anything to lose. Pull on the rope. Pull on it. You and me are getting to the dinghy. All right. You had it all figured out, didn't you? But you forgot one thing. Lou has to marry you again to collect the dough. And if you're not alive... Marty, please. I'm sorry, I am. Give me that rope and don't move. I've been wrong. I know it. Sure. I'm glad you're all right. I've been wrong about us. Don't worry, I won't kill you unless I have to. You're my new insurance policy. Now, get over into the boat. I sure, can't. it's little and the ocean's big and we're going just Where? the same. Shh. Not a sound. Get in. Where? Smooth and neat. As long as I had a gap at Claire's neck, Lou couldn't do a thing. His one bullet would cost him Claire 20,000 bucks and maybe his life. We drifted off a bit and I reached for the oars. But the water. The water in the oars. When I looked up, I saw Moran standing in the stern of the pelican. Evans, I can see you. There aren't any oars, are there? That's right. But you try to shoot me and I'll kill Claire. You won't get away. Claire? She can't help you. Claire! I'm going to put him out. Don't worry. Want a chance for him, honey? Don't you understand? I'm sorry. I don't want you to die. I want to be with you. I was wrong. You bet you were wrong. You're going to find out. We're going to paddle. Paddle with our hands. If we can lose him in the fog, we'll be all right. Just remember, if he finds me, it's too bad for you now, paddle. Get over on the side. Look out. Look out. Now, she's tipping. Look out. You lost it. The gap. Yeah. I lost it. Now, maybe you'll believe me. I want to help you get away from him. Sure, I believe you. But if he finds us, as soon as I see the boat, I'm going to knock you out and throw you overboard. That's how I believe you. Now, paddle. Stop paddling. Be quiet. Listen to me. Please. I love you. I'm on your side. I won't let him hurt you. Shut up. Evan! Evan! A patch of fog dissolved for a second, and in the darkness, I saw a darker shape. It was the pelican. I knew that Lou had seen us. I reached for Claire. <laughs> I felt her shoulder, then her neck. Claire! Are you all right? Yes. I wanted to hit her. Now. But I felt her neck. It was warm and there was a little pulse under my fingers. He's lost the gap. She was telling him to shoot me and suddenly it didn't matter anymore. The pelican loomed over us and then Claire twisted away from me and I didn't care. I was tired. All right, come on, Evan. Get up here. 
How about you found on deck? Give me a hand, Claire. Come on. All right, Evans. Get out of there. Get it over with. I'm staying. Give me the gun, Lou. Let me do it. Are you kidding? No. Give it to me. I hate him. No, baby, I'll do it. You better tie the dinghy on, then I can't hold it. Yeah, hold the gun. Thanks, Lou. What are you telling me? Give me the rope, Marty. I don't want you to drift away now. I got out of the dinghy and stood on the deck looking down at what used to be Lou Barris. Claire handed me the gun and just stared at me. We didn't say anything for a long time. Fog's lifting. Yeah. It's getting lighter. I guess the sun will be breaking through soon. Do you believe what I told you before? Yeah, I believe you now. I'm sorry. I'll try to make it up to you. Sure. We better get going. We're going back to San Pedro? Yeah. I guess I can figure out how this thing runs. Marty, what about me? Uh, I've got to tell the police. Oh. Maybe it won't be too tough. I don't know. It's all right. Better. Marty. Yeah? Do you still care? I mean... I was going to kill you back there, and I didn't. You figure it out. Suspense, presented by Autolite. Tonight's star, Dan Daly. Harlow's quite an angler. In fishing, he's real bright. But what he's really best at is talking Autolite. Thanks, Hap. You're right. I'm inspired by Autolite. Autolite makes more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in its 28 plants from coast to coast. These include complete electrical systems used as original equipment on many of America's finest cars. Generators, coils, distributors, voltage regulators, wire and cable, starting motors, and electric windshield wipers. All engineered to work together perfectly as part of the Autolite team. All engineered to give you unexcelled Autolite service. Don't accept electrical parts supposed to be as good. Ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. Remember, you're always right with Autolite. Next week on Suspense, Mr. Dana Andrews as star of The Crowd. And here is Mr. Andrews to tell you about it. Have you ever noticed when a person dies on a city street how quickly the crowd gathers? As a police lieutenant, I knew that one person in that quickly gathering crowd was responsible for the death of the man lying on the busy street. Yes, next week, Mr. Dana Andrews as star of The Crowd. And in the weeks to come, you will hear such famous stars as Joseph Cotton. Miriam Hopkins and Milton Berle, all appearing in Tales Well Calculated to Keep You in Suspense. Tonight's Suspense play was produced and directed by Elliot Lewis, with music composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lud Gluskin. Parts of this program were transcribed. Over the Bounding Main is an original play written for Suspense by Gloria Elmore and Jimmy Barnett. Dan Daly may soon be seen in the 20th Century Fox production, My Blue Heaven with Betty Grable. And remember next week on Suspense, Mr. Dana Andrews in The Crowd. You can buy world-famous Autolite resistor or standard-type spark plugs, Autolite stay-full batteries, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite... Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>